Assalamu alaikum ji. My name is Umar Javed Qureshi. Uh, my name is Umar Javed Qureshi and uh, we are here with another episode of uh, Goha Sharif's GS Masterclass. And you are talking to Mr. Goha Sharif and our lovely guest, Prati. Hi. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all of you, those of you who joined in and who will be watching it later and viewing it later. This is Gohar Sharif with another episode of GS Masterclass. And today we have the pleasure of having Brittany Nichols in our show. Today the topic is emotional intelligence. Brittany Nichols lives in North Carolina, USA, and she is tuning in from there, USA. Let's welcome her. Welcome to the show. Brittany, how are you? Thank you, Gohar. I'm well. How are you? It's an I'm honor to be well. back. I'm... Yes, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, Brittany has been associated with uh, GS Masterclass for some time now, and she has already done Coffee with Gohar. So this is one step above it so it's more of a master class master stuff from Brittany. Brittany, tell uh, us something about you viewers would like to know your background uh, what do you do and what is your forte your experience expertise something like this of course uh, so i am the founder of catalyst for change LLC. Mm -hmm. I started it about two years ago, and it focuses on emotional intelligence and effective communication strategies. My background is in psychology, and it was more through self-exploration and dealing with my own challenges in regards to emotional instability uh, and really not understanding how our minds operated and how it impacts our lives. And once I kind of found that out, like how everything works and how our thoughts really create a reality, that's when I decided, you know what, I'm going to start a business around this because I think that it stems far beyond my personal problems. I see it throughout society um, with 90% statistics saying that we lack emotional intelligence, 90% of us. So it's definitely needed. <laughs> definitely, definitely. There was a time in 60s and 70s and 80s when people were thought to be more like machines and uh, the HR people were mostly focusing on the management by objectives and Peter Drucker's theories were there for the people to implement and they were not realizing that there is a difference between people and machines. For yes. machines you oil it and they perform and there is efficiency. For people they were thinking annual bonuses or vacations all paid is the way they can manage people. But then came a time when in 1990s and probably in 1995 when Daniel Goldman came up with the idea of writing books on emotional intelligence. And then people started realizing that there is more to IQ than the um, things which are emotional coefficient. And you are probably writing a book about it as well, right? So tell us about your book as well. Yeah, um, so I just finished the book not too long ago. It's in the hands of my editor as we speak. It's called okay. The EQ Deficiency, and it talks about our lack of emotional intelligence in society. And it's not because we're dumb or stupid. It's because we've never been taught these skills before. As you said, we were taught how to operate like machines. We right. were taught to operate as computers, to run a script, to run a program. And the problem with that is when we run these scripts in our life, we're not conscious or mindful of why we do what we do and our thoughts and our feelings and how that correlates to everything that creates our reality and our perspective. So my book kind of breaks that down and explains all the turmoil that we have today and how all of that can be correlated to our lack of EQ. And it also provides solutions for how to overcome that as well. So I'm really excited for that to launch in September. We wish you all the best and probably that's going to be online because maybe because of the social distancing, yeah. uh, all those uh, maybe restrictions still, you will not be having a hall full of people and admirers. Very right? true. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> so my best wishes and Umar J. Qureshi will be sending you 
live uh, online all our best wishes and all our uh, prayers for your successful book launch okay let's start with today's topic what are you going to tell our viewers today how yeah. are you going to take us through that uh, talk so today we're going to be talking about mindfulness because okay. emotional intelligence the foundation of emotional intelligence is awareness and mindfulness and awareness are essentially the same thing so i'm going to hop over and start to share my screen sure please go ahead please let me know when you are able to see it right now i can see uh, myself and yourself uh, yeah it's coming up yeah great Okay. And that's Catalyst for Change LLC, probably the first opening slide, right? Yes. yes. Great. Awesome. Great. So if anybody wants to find out more about what I do or about emotional intelligence in the book, here's the website that you can go to, um, thecatalystforchange.com. And let's get started. Okay. So mindfulness. Being mindful is a crucial part of emotional intelligence. When we are unable to be present with our emotions and observe objectively without judgment, we can get ourselves into trouble, and it creates a toxic environment for ourselves and for others. So before we define what, emotion, or what mindfulness is, I would like to address a few misconceptions about mindfulness. Many people use meditation and mindfulness, the terms, interchangeably. And while uh, you can be mindful while meditating, you do not have to meditate to be mindful. Meditation is deep focus and concentration on the mind. It is often done in a calm and peaceful environment, much as you see on the screen right now. However, you can be mindful in any environment. While I'm talking to you now, I am mindful. I am mindful of my presence, how I feel, my breath. Mindfulness is about your level of awareness, which we will get into in just a moment. And with mindfulness, you don't need to worry about your mind being consumed by thoughts. Oftentimes when people try to meditate, they say, well, I just keep having thoughts and I'm trying to clear my mind. Mindfulness is not about clearing the mind. It's about being aware to everything that's going on both inside of you and around you. You only need to be present for those thoughts and observe objectively, which means without judgment. So let's define Good. mindfulness. The Oxford Dictionary defines mindfulness as the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. It's a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations, and it's used as a therapeutic technique. Cool. Cool. Good. So there's four domains to mindfulness, uh, and, and these are the four that you need to be aware of when practicing mindfulness. The first being awareness. Focusing your attention on your senses, feelings, thoughts, and focusing on your autonomic nervous system. So that's your breathing, your heart rate, all of the things that your body does automatically, like digesting your food and all of that. Next is connection. This could be your connection to the universe, other people in your life, and connection to yourself, or as some people call it, the self. And while we physically can't escape ourselves, we sometimes get lost within ourselves. And through mindfulness, we find connection to all things, including who we are at our core. Next is purpose. This is both your intent in the current moment and your overall purpose in life. For example, 
your purpose for being mindful could be found uh, to want to find more peace or appreciation for the present moment. And lastly, you have openness. So I think of open-mindedness. This is your ability to seek a broader perspective beyond our limiting beliefs and our take on reality. Because we can only perceive a very small, almost uh, invisible speck of reality. I mean, our perception Definitely. is so small. Yeah. And we can objectively see alternative perspectives and we become curious about the world and those around us. But with everything in life, there is a flip side, right? And to have an up, there must be a down. Definitely. So those downs, let's look at the opposite. So the opposite mm -hmm. of awareness is distraction. Mm. And distraction yeah. is the epitome, it seems, of the modern world. Our attention is constantly being fought over. Our devices our hectic lifestyles, obligations to family and work, and the negative self-talk we inflict on ourselves. And the next is cool. disunity. Since the beginning of man, we have been at war with ourselves. We've been focused on our differences and fearing those who are not like us. But we can also be con disconnected from the self. If our actions are not in alignment with our values, then we too are disconnected. And then hollow, so also emptiness or lack of purpose. It's fostered by distractions, and many of us do what we need to do to simply get by, whether that's working a job that we don't like um, just so we can pay our bills or just following social scripts and norms that we knew, do not believe in, which can leave us feeling empty and lonely inside. And lastly, the opposite of openness is being closed-minded. And as humans, we tend to become consumed with the idea of the self. And this egocentric tendency causes us to grossly overestimate our ability to accurately perceive reality. And when this happens, we become less curious about alternative perspectives. But mindfulness, mindfulness brings awareness to all of these elements. And we can assess both the elements that bring us contentment as well as those that are holding us back from living a fulfilling life. So now let's look um, or talk about how to become mindful. Cool. So it's called the 54321 of mindfulness. Now, these four domains that we discussed, awareness, connection, purpose, and open-mindedness, fall under two pillars, environmental mindfulness and internal mindfulness. So right now we're going to look at environmental mindfulness. And here's a simple way that you can practice every day to become mindful of your environment. So find five things that you can see around you. So don't get overwhelmed and focus on too many. Just focus on those five things. Then four things that you can touch. Now, when we think of touch, sometimes we think of literally touching things with our hands. But it could be the weight that you feel in your seat. It could be the touch, the feeling of your, flu uh, your feet connected to the floor. It could be the filling of your clothes on your body. There's so many different ways that we can experience the sense of touch. And then find three things that you can hear. Right now, I'm hearing the sound of my computer fan roaring. I'm hearing the sound of myself <laughs> speaking. And I also hear the sound of birds chirping out my window. And then two things you can smell. Now, some smells may be pleasant, some may not be pleasant, but you can smell your coffee, or I love aromatherapy. I have an oil diffuser in my office, which um, I'm always mindful and present with. And then one thing that you can taste, it could be the taste of your coffee. It could be, you know, maybe the mint left over from brushing your teeth. But all of these things 
bring environmental awareness um, and connection to you and the environment. So now let's talk about internal mindfulness because this one's a little bit trickier. Mm -hmm. All right, so internal mindfulness is all about the mind and the body, the world inside of ourselves, what we feel and think, uh, and become aware of your breath, your body, maybe some tension that you may be holding. What is your current mood? What thoughts do you have? What is the origin of those thoughts? And how does this all connect to how you feel within your body? So for example, the feeling of fear may manifest as high heart rate, maybe tension, your, your muscles are drawn in more intense, maybe your breathing is more shallow, and sometimes you may feel nauseous. So all of that is bringing awareness to those feelings and thoughts behind that feeling of fear. For example, a feeling of peace may manifest in the body as a release of tension, a feeling of lightness, calm. Uh, your heart rate may be slower. You may be taking deeper breaths than before. So all of these things to be aware of. But let's go back to the diagram and begin to evaluate where we are in each of these domains. So ask yourself, what are you aware of? And then also, what is distracting you from awareness? So are you on your phone? Is that a distraction? Is, is it preventing you from being present and in the moment because you are living through an alternative reality? What are you connected to? Also, what are you disconnected from that you need to bring back and, and connect with again? Is it with someone else? Is it with the environment? Is it with yourself? And do this for all of these different domains and ask these questions. And the action of asking these questions and finding the answer is mindfulness because it's all about that awareness and drawing attention to that. So let's look at the benefits of mindfulness. There are many benefits to being mindful. You can improve your cognitive performance. Many reasons because by being mindful, it reduces the stressors in our lives because now we can understand those stressors and properly address them. And stress in and of itself causes our mind to become foggy. We're not able to think clearly. And so that leads to better cognition and performance whenever we're able to eliminate those stressors in our life. It also increases our attention span because we're always being distracted by being mindful, by constantly being in the present moment. It prevents us from constantly having to find the next thing and become distracted. So it eliminates distraction, which increases our attention span. It also increases understanding and compassion because we realize that reality is beyond our perception. And by doing that, we let go of a lot um, of a lot of our very strong belief systems. And it doesn't mean that we have to get rid of those. It just kind of means that we loosen the reins a bit and become more understanding of alternative perspectives and beliefs. And by That's very that, important. That's very yes. important. Yes. Yeah. And when we become understanding of others, I believe it naturally leads to compassion, right? Because we fear what we don't know, and when we are reluctant to understand, then we don't know. And so we have that fear, and fear prevents us from being compassionate. And it also reduces bias and increases open mindedness So I believe these two are very well connected. Um, again, because we're coming from a place of understanding, then we're able to take care of those biases that we had and open our minds up. And again, it decreases anxiety levels, which we're talking about increasing cognitive performance by decreasing those anxiety levels. 
um, we're able to have that, but also emotional hijacking. So if you don't know what emotional hijack hijacking is, it is when, so let me back up a little bit. So there's three parts to the brain. There's the, uh, what they call the reptilian brain or in the brain stem. And then it moves up to the limbic system, which is the emotional brain. And then we go up to the higher level of reasoning, which we are known for as human beings, the rational brain. But it comes from the brain stem and goes up. And sometimes whenever we're triggered, we get stuck in the limbic system, which is right before the rational brain. And by being mindful, it allows us to kind of stop before we just react on emotion and really think about what we're doing and bring that awareness. So instead of reacting on impulse, we're able to bring it back to clarity and rationalize um, what we're doing before we react. And it also decreases depression because when you are connected to things, you are taking care of that disunity or the lack of purpose that may arise from not being mindful. And then it, in general, it increases our overall well-being because when we are able to have control of how we react and respond and when we are connected to one another and the universe and ourselves, then it just brings uh, just this sense of peace about us. So how do we train our minds to become mindful? So there are two types of learning. There's declarative learning and there is procedural procedural learning. Okay. So let's talk about each of these. So declarative learning is about the knowledge. Right now in this presentation, you are provided information on how to become mindful. But until you actually put this into practice, which is procedural learning, you're not able to fully develop that skill. And these two types of learning happen in different parts of the brain and they affect the brain differently. So declarative learning happens in the cortex of the brain or the neocortex. But whenever we learn something and practice it, it actually uh, is in the ba basal ganglia. So for those of you who, who aren't familiar with neuroscience, I'm going to simplify this a little bit more. When we learn information, it's like we're putting it in a filing cabinet. We have that. We can draw from it. But it doesn't really do anything. It's like having the blueprint to a building without a structure. And then when we start to build the structure, start with a foundation, you know, it doesn't happen with a snap of a finger. You first have to lay the foundation and then you do the frame. And we have to build that structure in our brains whenever we develop a skill. And so that's why practice, I don't believe it equals perfect, but the, the saying goes practice equals perfect because the more we do something, the stronger those connections are in the brain. It hardwires the brain to develop that skill. So it goes from being something that we have to think about doing to being an unconscious habit. And that's kind of where we want to get with our mindfulness. Cool. Yeah. And lastly, becoming mindfulness just opens the door to so many other things in a completely new reality. So I hope um, this was a good overview for mindfulness, and I'm going to now exit out of my sharing, and I will take any questions anyone has. I think, uh, Brittany, it was a very good uh, overview of mindfulness, and you gave a very good insight into uh, mindfulness for the people who are familiar and maybe perhaps not so familiar how our mind thinks and how our perception of reality interacts with when we come across people and we interact with people. Uh, is it the behavior or the perception we have about people? Did you say, is it the behavior or perception? Yeah. 
Is that a question or a comment? Because I feel like it's kind of <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah, you can treat it either way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it really does. How we see, first off, how we see ourselves is going to influence yeah. how we see other people. Exactly. Right? When we change the view of ourselves, it changes how we see other people because oftentimes we project our insecurities, our fears onto someone else. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why I think being mindful, you know, the two different pillars of mindfulness, so the internal and the external. And I think it's extremely important to focus on the internal uh, so much deeper and, and so much more than external because it allows us to change that view of the external. We can become mindful of the external, but our, our reality still could shift based on how we've changed our perception about ourselves. Right. Well, I think, uh, Brittany, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we would like to thank you for this GS Masterclass, for being uh, available, taking time out of your busy schedule, your book writing, your research work, and everything you are doing at the moment. And That's would fine. love to, and would love to have you in coming a series of lectures in which we'll be inviting subject matter experts to come and deliver their uh, lectures, their talk in GS Masterclass. So guys, this was the first of the series of this one. And this was Brittany Nichols with mindfulness as our today's topic. And we sign out, but just in case you have questions or something, Brittany can answer those once it's posted on the Facebook. Uh, so those questions will be answered in due course of time because of the time difference between uh, the different hemispheres, but definitely she would love to answer. Brittany, would you like to have some concluding remarks, some wrap-ups for this one? Um, I just tell everyone live and lead uh, with an open heart and open mind because you can't go wrong by doing either of those. Definitely a great message. Definitely a big uh, something takeaway for people from this talk. Thank you very much, Brittany, once Thank again. You, for, yeah, okay. and would love to and would love to have you on coming uh, series of lectures, and we'll slot it in next time. Sure. I'd be yeah. honored. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brittany, and thank you very much, Omar J. Qureshi, for the facilitation. Thank you, Omar. Bye. Right.